Okay, I'll I'll kick off everybody. Um, we've got we've got twenty three with us at the moment. I'm sure different people will will want to join us as, as we go through. Um, as as you all know, it's it's actually been recorded um, because I think there's some people who want to listen to it after the after the event. So um, hence, hence we're we're recording the meeting. But good good evening to everybody for this evening's Zoom meeting. It's fantastic to see so many people attending this evening. So thank you on behalf of NALC. But my, my name is Jeremy Burton. I'll just introduce myself. I'm the County Officer for Norfolk ALC. And part of our role at Norfolk ALC is to work on behalf of the parish and town councils in coordinating and working with the Norfolk Lieutenancy Office, Lieutenancy Office, sorry, on major events such as this. And, and I do firmly believe in, in our in our motto, stronger we are, sorry, together we are stronger. So the, the main piece of this Zoom meeting is, is to meet the pageant master himself, um, Bruno Peak, who hopefully is on your screens now. And we can hear the plans for the Queen's Ju Platinum Jubilee Beacons, which will be lit on Thursday, the 2nd of June, 2022, which is obviously next year. Prior to the meeting, I did send out invitations and a letter from Bruno and a guide taking part. So hopefully most of you had a chance to have a look at that um, for yourselves. We also have attended this evening two of the deputy lieutenants for, in Norfolk, and that's Claire, Claire Whelan and Ian Lonsdale, uh, to give and answer any questions and points that you, you may have about the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations. And also, they want, to, just in general, really, if you want to have any word or speak to them about anything in particular about the lieutenancy. And I know some of you also, I think they've, they've, they've brought along some of the, the um, COVID memorial plaques uh, with them, which I think they're just going to run through with it, with any of you um, which are present as well. We have a question and answer session at the end after the sort of presentations. Um, and also, if you want, can you, if you use the, the chat facility? Russell is uh, sort of monitoring the chat facility for any questions. So, so put, put those in the chat room as we go along so we can answer any questions uh, and we can pick those up at the end of the session. At the end of the evening, Norfolk ALC's president, Timo Riordan, uh, it will summarise and, and close the meeting. So at this point, I'd just like to pass you over to the pageant master himself, who's Bruno Peake. Good evening to you all. Um, I think it would be useful if I gave you an overview, first of all, of the way that the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Beacons is going to be working on the 2nd of June, because it's not just about the lighting of beacons, which you all know is a great tradition going back to Queen Victoria in relation to celebration uh, celebrating Royal Jubilees. The event will officially start at one o'clock on the 2nd of June with town criers throughout the United Kingdom and those countries in the Commonwealth that have town criers, where they will be undertaking a cry announcing uh, the Jubilee weekend, but also announcing the lighting of the beacons that evening. And the cry um, can be seen and viewed in the guide to taking part, the wording of which uh, had to, of course, be agreed uh, with Buckingham Palace in advance. And at the moment, I'm pleased to say that, uh, again, Norfolk's leading the way with the, the largest number of town criers in the UK in each county. We have town criers not just in the UK, but in other, country, other Commonwealth countries as well. And then at 9.15 p.m., we, because, um, you know, the Queen is very um, keen and very uh, receptive to the sound of the pipes. As we know, she has a piper playing every morning at Buckingham Palace and where she resides um, during different locations during the year. We've had a special piece of music written called Du Regnier, which is going to be played by pipers again throughout the whole of the UK, Channel Islands, Isle of Man, and in the various capital cities of the Commonwealth at 9.15, at individual locations of their choice within their local communities. And again, not necessarily linked with a beacon. Where we, where we have beacons and pipers can be present, they will. And as we get registrations from uh, people undertaking the lighting of beacons, we do encourage them to contact the local piper to take part. 
this again is providing a unique opportunity and part of the celebration of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And then at 9.15 p.m. we are encouraging the lighting of all the beacons, not just throughout the UK but within the capital cities of the Commonwealth country. So the first country um, in the, um, the time zone will be the first ones to light their beacons and they will suddenly come across the world to the UK and then on to the, the final country at 9.15. But what we also wanted to do, we wanted to create something completely different, again, to highlight the importance of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And we wanted to fill the, um, the not just the UK, but the Commonwealth um, countries with the sound of music and song. So what we're currently doing is running a competition throughout the Commonwealth for a special song to be sung that night by choirs of all denominations, all faiths, all creeds, all colours, all age groups, professional, non-professional, coming together that night. And to date, we've now got three finalists for the lyrics of the song, which uh, one's in Africa, one's in Australia, and one's in the UK. And by the first week of the first week of December, we will have the winning song that's going to be sung across the globe at 9.15 p.m. that evening as, you know, part of the lighting of the beacons that night. So it's not just going to be, you know, people coming together in their local communities, lighting beacons and celebrating this important uh, moment in the Queen's reign and also in her life too, but also involving people in different nationalities and communities in the singing of this song. That's a silence. Hello? Hello, uh, Bruno? Yeah, could you hear me? No. You couldn't? Not for a moment, no. So you didn't hear anything what I said? Yes, we, we just heard, didn't hear the last piece, I think last sentence or two. What, what, which part didn't you hear then? Because I got on the sound that. Last couple of sentences, Bruno. Oh, right. Well, OK. As, as I said, what we wanted to do is to unite the world, not just in the, in the lighting of beacons, but through the singing of this Commonwealth, a song for the Commonwealth. So the winning song will be sung by choirs in locations of their own choice as the beacons are being lit at 9.15 p.m. Okay. Madden, did you want to say Yeah, word? Could, could I just say something there? I've written down the times and I've got 9.15 for the piper, 9.15 to light the beacon, no, no, and sorry, 9 sorry, for the no, choir. Sorry, I do apologise. 9.09 .09 for the piper. Right, okay, sorry. that's fine. Thanks very I've, much. I've had a long day, so I do apologise. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be chaos yeah. otherwise. <laughs> no, no, 9.09 9 .09 for the pipers. Super, okay, And then 9.15 for the, the beacons being lit. And then as and the, the beacons choir. are being lit, choirs, what, those choirs linked with beacons, great, but choirs that are not linked can also take part in central locations within their local communities because Super. we wanted to do something totally unique uh, for this great um, moment in the Queen's life. Super. And you'll be pleased to know, can you all hear me? Yes. Be pleased to know that the, the song competition is also being coordinated by an organisation based in Norfolk yeah. called Commonwealth Resounds. So Norfolk is certainly leading the way in the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Beacons and celebrations next year. And Bruno, I think to add to your um, words, um, I think the aim is to have a minimum of 70 beacons throughout Norfolk, isn't it? One representing one year for each year of the Queen's yeah. Um, reign. Yeah, we're, we're encouraging the lighting of 70 beacons per county with each beacon representing a year in the Queen's reign. But also now, we're also going to be encouraging those lighting beacons to plant a circle, and we want to do it in a circle, a circle of 12 trees, 
with each tree representing each decade of the Queen's reign. And this will be um, part of the update of the guide to taking part, which takes place at the end of this month. So it's good, the ambition is to have um, 70 beacons in Britain. And how, how do people participate? Obviously, we've got your leaflet, we've got your letter here, and also hopefully everyone's got the letter and also the, the guide. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you just want to talk us through how we take part. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the guide to taking part gives all the information necessary for people to participate. It, I mean, it gives the three styles of beacons. We've got the traditional bonfire beacon. We've got the beacon brazier, which, again, mm. um, dates back to 1588, uh, when they used to use beacons to uh, warn the uh, England of, the, uh, of possible invasion. But, but going back to the year 2000, we also created a gas fuel beacon that can be used on top of tall, either church towers or other high locations that, where they can't have uh, bonfires or, or beacon braziers. And they've, in, uh, over the last 10, 20, 30 years, have uh, uh, proved very successful and very, um, you know, cost effective for those mm. wanting to take part. And all this information, as I said, is in the guide. And those taking part just need to go to page 10 of the guide and register their event in step one. It really is sim very simple. And I'm getting, I mean, I've now, I'm now updating the guide at the end of this month, and we've got over 100 beacon locations uh, being, uh, we've received in this month with um, eight of them arrived today from different parts of the country. The nice thing, about, nice thing about it is we're also encouraging farms to take part because again, we, we learned back from the Queen's Golden Jubilee back in 2002, a lot of farms want to take part in the event, but they want to make it, they want to take part with a beacon organizing it for family friends and farm workers but they they want to keep it they want to make it a private event but part of the national celebration so we have public events and private events where we've got private family estates or farms taking part as well as your local you know towns parishes district boroughs and city council so it's really and bruno i think it's bruno i think it's important to add as well when you're talking about registering it's important to register whatever type of beacon you're doing. Absolutely. Because A, yeah. so that you can count it, and B, I think you're putting a, together a book to be given to the Queen after the event as well, with everybody listed in it. Aren't yeah, you? The, 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 most, the most important part of the registration is A, that I can register them so that we can send them further information over the next few months. But also those um, who are having private beacons they are playing an equal role with the public beacons, but what we don't do is we don't publish those beacons in advance. But as you quite rightfully said, every beacon location, every piper, every town crier taking part will be put in this special book that's going to be uh, given to the Queen. And so one off, there's only one book produced. We did it for the Queen's uh, Diamond Jubilee and the Golden Jubilee. And the, the two books from the Golden Jubilee and the Diamond Jubilee are now in the Royal Library at Windsor. And what we wanted to do with this one is to make sure that every choir that's involved, every beacon that's involved, every piper that's involved, every town crier that's involved will be listed in this book that's going to be given to the Queen after the event. So again, it's part of history. And I think some of you may find that some in your community may be aware through other lines as well, because it's I know it's gone down the from a farming point of view, the Country Landowners Association link. It's gone down the National Farmers Union link and specifically to Norfolk. It's also been published in the recent edition of Mardler that comes out from the Royal Norfolk Agricultural Association to all its contacts as well. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, we have had one question regarding the um, the guide etc and the letter if anyone wants a guide or letter um, I, I did send them out with the invitation to this evening's meeting but if if someone if it's missed somebody 
then um, just send me an email, Jeremy Burton. Um, I hope you've got my address or any of the NALT team and we can send you on the letter and the guide. OK, so if you, if you just can just drop me a line, um, we will send you on the guide and the letter from from Bruno. And, and the guide is being updated at the end of each month as more and more people join the project and more communities join the project. The guide is updated every send month. Send you another link. I've sent you a different link. Someone talking to me or somebody else? No, I think somebody else. Um, right. Okay. So the, okay. Guide, the, the guide is updated at the end of every month with the public events that are taking part. The private events are not listed in the guide to protect their, A, to protect their privacy until the event is all over, then they will be made public. Okay. OK, I was going to ask people if they've got questions they want to um, ask Bruno, but a Adrienne, I see that you, you want to ask a question. If I might, please. Um, Bruno, if you're updating it every month, does the uh, document that Jeremy sent out, which I'm sorry I haven't got in front of me, does it have a link to the web page? Because obviously then we can keep up to date as the months progress. Yeah, the, the, the guide, as I said, the guide is on the website and it's, it's updated at the end of each month. So that's lovely. Go, thank you. Yeah, if you go into the guide, you'll see the updates at the end of each month. Thank you. And I was going to say, I'm very lucky. I've got the Lord, the Lady Lieutenant, Lady, Lord Lieutenant, Lady Danick coming next week to plant an oak tree here. But with your idea of the 12 trees, we were thinking about doing some fruit trees in an orchard. Oh, seven, seven trees. Oh, seven trees. Sorry and, for the seven years. Yeah, and, and what we want to do is to do it in a circle, not, not just willy nilly, but to just to, to, to do it in a circle. So the seven trees are together, representing the seven decades of the Queen's reign. That sounds a lovely idea. Thank you. Have we got any? Um, I see that Russell's put a note in the chat, but are there any other um, questions? It's, it's hard to see across, actually, anyone with a raised hand. But anyone else got a... Was it yourself, Jane? Did you want to raise something? <laughs> Uh, sorry, I didn't quite get to the beginning of the meeting, and I apologise. Um, obviously, you've had great interest in this, and you've got 70 beacons being sort of the anticipated number you want. But how are you going to select 70 from the 100 already application, shall we call it, you've had in to date? No, I haven't had 100 applications in to date. Sorry, interested parties. I, I beg your pardon. No, no, uh, we, we, we're, we're registering the beacons as they come in. Okay. Our aim is to have 70, whether they are public or private. Okay. But then if, if the county or people within the county want to go over 70, that's not a problem. Okay. The minimum amount we're looking for is 70, as I said, to represent a year in the life of the Queen's Rank. Which would be a lovely, lovely achievement for, some, for Norfolk, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, there's, there is no limit on numbers. It's a case of more the merrier, but it would be nice to get to 70 as this particular link of one per year of Her Majesty's reign. But if we go over 70, great, let's crack on. Let's have 140, two per year. And, 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 and we've, we've got some lovely locations as well. We're having one at Sandingham, Beacons being lit on the Sandingham Estate, Holcombe Hall. So we're also involving the great country houses as well. You know, it's really quite exciting because people of different nationalities and organisations want to get part in, take part in the event. I mean, we've got the RNLI uh, getting involved. We've got um, Army Cadets, Sea Cadets, uh, Girl Guides, all pledging to get involved in lighting beacons within their own local communities, because this is very much a celebration for the people from the ground up. It's not just a London centric activity this is the the beacons on the 2nd of june next year will be the first true community event um, of the queen's platinum jubilee weekend okay. karen i can see your hand up karen i'm sorry to stand russell if you could just Karen. Could I, okay, um, actually, can I bring yeah. in Andrew Lake, who's uh, posted something in the chat? And if we can bring, okay. him, and then we'll bring in Karen. Hi, oh, yes, I was just wondering, I'm, I'm Clark at Elsham, and we're looking at doing this, but I was just wondering if any of the National Trust houses 
were involved, such as Blipling or Felbrig? Oh, that's an interesting question. I'll give you an interesting answer. The National Trust have played uh, an important role, the same with English heritage, in the, pre, uh, the Queen's uh, Diamond Jubilee beacons and the Golden Jubilee beacons. And they are now, uh, I've been asked to contact them again in early January to get them involved in the Queen's Platinum Jubilee beacons. But as we know, the National Trust and English Heritage have had a very difficult year and they've been focusing on you know, basically having to overcome the problems. And they're now starting to get involved um, from January the 2nd next year. Okay, is that okay then, Sue? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Okay, can I, can I, okay, can I bring in Julian then? And then I will bring in Karen after that. So Thank you. If you can unmute yourself. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned the, the, um, the gas-powered uh, beacons. Yeah. And I think you said some, something like, you know, using them on a, a church tower or something. So, so I've really got two questions. One, um, I've looked at the what you've got in the plan. How easy is it to get the, a gas power beacon up a spiral staircase? And number two is if you don't have a church or anything like that handy, um, how high does it actually stand yeah. if you lit it on the floor? It's, and how effective would it be? It stands about six feet high, and the flame coming out of it is about three foot high. And, and I'll answer your question in two parts. First of all, um, from previous experience, because I've carried one up myself, from previous experience with the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, sorry, the, the, from the millennium, from, that's when we first started using gas beacons, from the millennium to the Queen's Golden Jubilee, Diamond Jubilee, and her 90th birthday, um, I've never, I've not received any problems with people carrying them up church <laughs> hours. Because um, as I said earlier on, if people want to take part, they'll carry them up. And I've carried one up myself. The beacon itself is so light, you can carry it under your arm. Okay, you may need two people to carry the bottle of gas up, but again, it's, it's just something so simple. And all the instructions of how to, to light it, how to put it together, all the safety issues are all linked uh, with the plans that come when people purchase their beacon directly from the manufacturer. Lovely, thank you very much. They are, seriously, they are very effective. And we, we've had many people, sorry, can I just get rid of that? Uh, many, pe many people, um, many people have um, used the gas beacons on the ground, and, but they've also been very effective. It's not the case of having them high up, it's the case of the beacon, beacon representing the local community taking part in the event. Thank you. Okay, so Karen from Siderstone, if you can come in now. Thank you very much, Russell. Um, you've kind of answered my question in a way. We, we, we've got a meeting with the whole community next week with the church, um, our village hall committee and the parish council to move forward with actually purchasing a beacon. We were looking at the gas beacon. The only land we own is our playing field, so we can't put a wooden crates on, otherwise we would ruin the grass. So we were thinking of putting a the gas uh, beacon on our playing field, which then overlooks um, Ciderstone Common. Is, that, that, that's fine. Because is that okay? Absolutely. As I said, we've had many communities in the past, especially in Northern Ireland, actually, because we all know they've, they've had problems with uh, fires in, in, in previous years, but um, only because of the different cultural, I can't, you know, I'm not going to go into it, but I think you all know. Um, but people have used the gas beacons in many different locations. Lovely. Thank you. We've actually got four. We've got, actually got four. We've got walking with the wounded. We all know who walking with the wounded are. We've got walking with the wounded taking four gas beacons to the top of the four highest peaks in the UK that night. So we're worrying about taking a bottle of gas to the top of the, a church tower they're going to be taking a bottle of gas to the top of Ben Nevis, Scaffold Pike and um, Sleeve Donard and Mount Snowden. So I think 
you know, we, we don't have the same challenge as what walking the womb have got. And if they can do it, anybody can do it. Thank you. If they want to. If they don't want to, they'll come up with all the excuses under the sun while they can't. Is there any other questions, Russell? There's just one more on this topic before we go on to the next the next session. So, Dorothy, has your question been answered by um, by uh, the question you just heard? Dorothy, or anything else you wanted to say? No, I just wanted to know, you know, we can make it into a, like, a, a community event. Absolutely. And obviously, we'll Absolutely. be on the playing field as well, yeah. like the, the lady before. I mean, it's very, you know, as I said before, this is, this is the first true, and I mean truly community event, that people will be celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And it's always nice to be the first. And we've okay, got many you. months to plan it. And, yeah. you know, I, as I've been told by many uh, parish clerks around the country, that the, the price of the gas beacon is not, is, is quite affordable and they can build it into their budgets next year if they want to. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Bruno. I'll just have one last question then. And that's uh, Philip, who's got... Uh, of a pyromaniac question there and then i'll hand back to jerry to then sort out what happens next so oh, i love pyromaniac. <laughs> well I, <clears throat> yes i've just posted it um we're we're pretty low uh sarston village in the waveney valley we're we're uh we're, we're i'm not saying we're down in the dumps but but we're we're pretty low so any beacon won't be visible from really the next door field um does that matter no, as I said, it's very much the, the taking part. You know, it's very much the taking part. We've had beacons in so many different locations. It's, you know, this, this is the final one, and this is why we want to encourage everybody to get involved. It's the taking part and bringing the local community together around that beacon, celebrating um, this momentous moment in the Queen's life. Okay, thanks Bruno. We're finished with the questions as far as I can see. If anybody puts their hands up this second, I will come to them. But uh, so Jeremy, I'm just going to hand back to you to then. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Thank you, Bruno, for that ins Thank inspirational you. speech. So it's really good to hear from you, and uh, hopefully that's lot answered lot lots of questions. Uh, and before um, we go, to, before we say anything else, Jeremy, I'm more than happy for people to contact me direct. You know, either by email or by phone. I'm available from seven o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock at night, um, from Monday morning through to Saturday p.m., but not on a Sunday. Well, I think you can trump that, can't you, Ian? Um, well, no, I, 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 can, I was, I was I can going to sorry, Ian. <laughs> I was just. <laughs> I, going I, I was going to vouch the fact that Bruno is alive then, because of, and very much alive and kicking because he has been contacting me over those times to <laughs> to sort of quiz me over various things. So okay. Bruno's okay. keeping me, me awake and working as well. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Without further ado, sorry about that, folks. But without further ado, I wanted just to introduce you to Claire and Ian, who are both deputy uh, lieutenants. And they want to talk really just in general about the Platinum Jubilee celebrations and also um, show you, I think, the uh, COVID memorial plaque. So over to um, Ian and Claire. Shall I start, uh, Ian? Uh, thank you, Jeremy. And, and thank you, Bruno. That was absolutely fascinating. And um, I'm delighted to say, I think here in the Ruddams where I live, we're going to have two beacons all being well. Well done. Make sure they register. Um, I, I have encouraged them to do so, and I'm sure they will if they haven't already. Um, but I'm here this evening actually speaking on behalf of James Bagg, who's the Deputy Lieutenant leading on the Norfolk Lieutenancy Jubilee celebrations. Um, the Lord Lieutenant, Lady Dannett, has asked James to oversee a county celebration of uh, Her Majesty's remarkable reign and her 75 years unrelenting service to us all. Um, and the, the lieutenancy is very aware that there are a lot of national things being um, planned as well as uh, as local ones. Of course, all the beacons that we've already heard about and, and the national canopy. So the Norfolk lieutenancy is very keen to do things which um, complement everything else that's going on and, and not com compete with those other plans. Um, it's likely that there'll be three separate themes. Uh, there'll be an arts tribute, which... I think is going to be a musical event, but it won't be on Jubilee weekend to be another time so people can can attend, um, uh, won't clash with, with local Jubilee events. 
There'll also be an environmental tribute and an awards scheme, but much more detail about those things will, will emerge over the coming months. Um, but the initiative I particularly wanted to mention this evening, we were keen that you were, were aware of, um, is a Norfolk website that's being planned. And it will be one on which communities and local councils can post links to their own um, events. It will be interactive. So if somebody, if people decide that they'd like to go to a Jubilee event, they can put in their postcode or their address and find out about things near them. But it's also planned that it will be much, much more than that and offer additional PR and, and media to make sure that all the events are, are well um, attended. Uh, the plan is for this to be launched on February the 6th, which is, of course, the date of the Queen's accession to the, the, the throne, and it will go live in April. Um, but James Bagg and the website developers have agreed with Norfolk ALC to come along to a webinar similar to this in early January, um, when the website's nearing its final stage, stages of uh, completion, um, because what they'd like to do uh, is to demonstrate it to you and um, make sure that it suits the needs of local council. So it's um, the idea so that you know, not only know that it exists, but just to make sure that it works for you um, too. So I think my request is please, please look out for that webinar that will come in early January so that we can all work together to make sure the website um, is a useful tool for you in, in advertising and drawing people to your Jubilee celebrations. I think it's going to be such an exciting time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. Okay, thanks, Claire. We, uh, any questions then for Claire or, or even for going back to Bruno, if there's anybody else who's got any more questions? Okay. Justine, did you want to say a piece about it? <laughs> You want me to have a word about the um about the plaques please yep okay ladies and gentlemen thank you very much indeed for allowing me to join you this evening um this is not about the, the jubilee celebrations but something which um a number of you may already be aware of and in fact i know one or two of you aware of it because um i've been spoken to one of two of you on the telephone this afternoon about the presentation of the the, the plaque that um lady Dannett has commissioned which um i give you show you a copy here it's in two sizes. This is the larger size, which is going to town councils, and there's a smaller one going to parish councils. It is unique to Norfolk. It's not going out anywhere else. As I say, it's been commissioned by Lady Dannett to commemorate a moment in time when the communities came together over the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, it, the wish is to try and have a, a plaque in every single parish within the county, which is over 560, I think, and about 350, I do know, have signed up, and the lieutenancy is now out there uh, presenting these plaques, and I actually uh, made appointments with four parishes this afternoon. How you wish to do it is entirely up to you. It is for the whole community. Um, it is designed, it is completely Norfolk, as I said. It was designed by somebody called Ruby Douglas, who is a recent graduate from the Norwich University of the Arts, who lives in Wyndham. The wording was researched by the Norwich National Centre for Writing and is using the simple but inspirational words of the 19th century Norfolk-born Harriet Martineau, who's often seen as the world's first female sociologist. Um, as I say, about 350 people have signed up. We would like to get more out there. We've had enough plaques made. I would like to emphasise that, that there is absolutely no public money whatsoever involved in this. All the costs have been met and um, completely covered by generous sponsorship from a number of Norfolk based charities. So if you haven't signed up, um, and I know a number of you have, as I say, I would commend it to you to do so. Um, so please consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can I, can I just make a plea? Uh, we normally have collected the emails before the evening starts. On this occasion, we've just had it very free format for people to just turn up. And um, I won't know all your emails because you just turned up in the in the chat. So if I can have people's emails, then we can get uh, questions and answers and other material to you after the session if you want them. So you can just be putting emails in the chat and I'll say the chat in a minute. 
Uh, but uh, anyway, Jeremy, back to you. Okay. Are there any questions uh, after listening to uh, Claire and Ian? I'd like to ask one. Go ahead, Brina. Can I have one for Goldstone? Um, I'm just trying to think, well, how close are you in Norfolk? <laughs> what, Goldstone? Uh, you're right on the boundary, aren't you? No, absolutely not. I'm a part of Great Yarmouth. <laughs> I know Great Yarmouth isn't. We'll chat afterwards, Bruno. Great, Great Yarmouth's not in Norfolk. No, I said Great Yarmouth is. Well, so is Galston. Galston's part of Great Yarmouth. Galston is a parish start, a part of uh, Great Yarmouth. Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> okay, is there, is there any, any, any other comments, Russell, we need, or anyone hands up? In the chat, I'm not spotting any hands up, but uh, I'm looking. Uh, Elaine, Elaine, come in, Elaine. Hi, good evening. All lovely to see you, Claire. Um, Ian, you know, for the presentation of the plaque, is it to be done at just a parish council meeting, or can it be turned into a more of a, a more of a community affair, as it's the whole of the community that was involved in all the great works? Um, I think it's as you wish, but I would encourage the whole community. And in fact, there was one um, parish I was talking to today. The parish is obviously the, the initial point of contact that we have. Um, and there was one parish I spoke to today and we delayed the presentation so that they can get round a number of people from the greater community to bring them in to, for them to be there for the presentation. So I would encourage it um, at a wider community event and indeed that is what's happening in East Harling in the near future because they've got a delayed um, victory in Europe celebration which they're going to do on Remembrance Sunday and the plaque is going to be presented at that event um, and I know one or two events where they've been presented recently at Harvest Festival um, occasions within churches so it's a complete gambit but I would, I would I'd suggest but as it's a whole community involvement, because it was the whole community that came together, and that's what we're celebrating, it would be really good to have a wider part of the community there, yes. Thank you, lovely, thank you. Thank you. Okay. We've got off to hand up from Sue Lake, Susan Lake. Will whoever's presenting it be contacting us or should we be contacting them at all? Because I'm um, thinking from what you just said, we would, it might be good if we could have ours presented at our Christmas light switch on. And that's obviously only a month away. Funny enough, other people have already mentioned um, Christmas light switch ons and doubling it up. So I think that's a, a, a cracking time to do it. Um, have you already confirmed that you would like one? Yes. Um, you should be, your details should have been sent round. Um, what's basically happened is that there is a central um, controlling point. The, um, they, we have a number of what are called um, regional areas, where as DLs broken down to regional areas. Each regional area has one controlling DL. A list has been sent to them and they are now um, divvying up uh, who will go, then go out and we should be contacting you. Um, okay. Which... Which parish council are you out of interest? Elsham. Okay, um, I'll have to try and find out who's in the Elsham area. So if, you, if you drop me a line, Sue, I will then uh, make sure it goes to the right person as well. So if you if you want to drop me a line, um, I'll, I can follow up for you. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yes, we sh we should be contacting you to to help you. Not so you should be reactive rather than proactive, having already made um made it known that you would like one. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other questions, Russell? Really? Okay, there's one from Doreen at Munsley, which is very, very similar to what Sue's just asked, but I think if, Dor if Doreen, you ask it, because it's a slightly different slant. Hi, sorry. Um, we've got a World War II unveiling um, in four weeks' time. Who would I contact to say to have the presentation there because there will be literally the whole village will be there so it'd be nice to have the presentation there i agree that would be an absolutely perfect time to do it um how again have you made it known that you would like one to be yes uh, have you can yeah um 
I think the, the answer is exactly the same and find out who in your local area um, is, has basically been designated Munsley. So I'll make a note about Elsham and Munsley and have a word from my end as well and see if we, see if we can close the loop for you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, and Doreen. So, can we bring in Julian now? Yeah, I just want to say that I it, it is working because I've I've heard um, from the DLs for my four parishes. Actually, it's three DLs because one does two. So, I, I've been contacted by three of them already. So, it it, it is getting through to, to some, and it'll probably come soon. Yeah, there should be a high number of. You know, several hundred forms, and at the bottom of the form, it has potential dates and locations for presenting the the plaque. So it should be in hand for for those people who provided the forms. So uh, it will happen. But it's it's good to hear you know, particular particular events that you want to tie into, and uh, then uh, Ian or whoever can uh, can make sure that's highlighted. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions. Jeremy, you spotting? Okay, okay. I just wanted to say, everybody, um, just on, on behalf of myself and uh, Norfolk ALC, I think that I'm really, really pleased to see the numbers tonight. We've got 44 attendees. I know we, this is the record is also going to be sent to other parish and, and um, towns as well. So um, I, I would say thank you for, for attending, everybody. Um, and, and this is really what Norfolk ALC is all, all about, is to be linking really the, the towns and parishes with a lieutenancy and we are really sort of proud proud to do that and, and keep an eye on our we'll keep you up to date on a on our newsletter also on our um keep an eye on, i'll send out um a newsletter sorry and also on our website uh, and and as i said we'll call you um, another meeting early part of uh, 2022 um just to um as i said again sort of similar thing to see how we've progressed at, at this point what i wanted to do is just to um Ask you over to our, our president of Norfolk ALC, which is Tim a Riordan, um, to, um, to conclude the meeting. So, um, if we can have a few words from yourself, Tim, please. Tim, before you say something, can I very? Yeah. I've just tried to reply to somebody in chat, and I'm I'm afraid I'm a complete luddite on things. Um, I've had a message from Sam of Shipton. Sam, I will check whether Shipton um, have um, made it known and. Um, get you registered and get um get somebody out to, to to cover you in the near future brilliant thank you very much okay sorry tim not at all i'm, I'm just drawing breath ian so you got me <laughs> the breath was coming in um i want to thank first of all jeremy for organizing this and it's very nice to have such a wide range of people on the screen uh, bruno certainly wonderful that you providing us with this and i can i've looked up the history of town criers while well, with this program was going on and I realized just how much this whole phenomenon is very much about bringing the past to the present mm -hmm. and the great medieval traditions of this county which are enshrined in so many aspects of our landscape and our buildings but also in our people and in our town criers are fully in display today and I do think it's very important for us all to realize that this tradition of writing beacons and shouting to the world the importance of an event that brings us all together as a collective entity is actually incredibly important. It reinforces the relationship between the parish and the lieutenancy and obviously the monarch. And I think that is the essence of being British, because I'm Scottish born, but also English, because I'm adopted English. But I do want to say how much, Ian and also Claire, you've brought to this discussion a richness of commitment from the Lord Lieutenant and from the monarch, who is obviously the Lord Lieutenant is acting on her behalf, to something which I do hope that Norfolk will rise to, and I'm sure it will. So, Bruno, you've done a wonderful job in giving us the beginning of a process that we should all be proud of. And when we do it, we will do it not just with the immediacy of the day and the recognition of a monarch and her 70 years of service, but also the importance of who we are as a group of people in a county which has massive traditions. And although this 70th anniversary or platinum jubilee will pass by, the essence of being Norfolk will never leave us. So on the basis of that, I think that you have started a process which will be of immense importance to the longevity of the county and its peoples, and not just to what is an extremely important event as part of the process of keeping us together. So thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. 
And as Nelson said, I am myself a Norfolk man and we should all glory in being so. So we've got to make sure that Norfolk stays leading the way. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, on that note, I will close the meeting. So thank you, everybody, once again. Thank you, everyone. We'll speak to you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.